You hold it and I'll pump. <laughs> Hello everybody, it's Barry here. Hope you are well wherever you are in the world. Welcome to our kitchen. Today, we're trying this. Oh, no, not this, because this is pepperoni. This is by the end of the video, hopefully, what we're gonna make with this. Yes, this is a homemade pepperoni sausage making kit. There's many available. Uh, I spotted this in a shop the other day and recently we did the uh, vegan cheese making kit. Uh, subtitle of that video could basically have been whizzing up nuts, couldn't it? But basically, by the end of the video, we should hopefully have made our own homemade pepperoni. Something I've wanted to do for quite a long time, but the thing that caught my eye with this literally caught my eye, is that we can make this in a couple of hours. Now, I've always been a little bit naive when it comes to pepperoni. I've just sort of like, you know, bought it in a packet like this and had a little nibble on it going, oh, that's all right. But it's actually uh, cured me. I did not actually, I just thought it's like pre-cooked. I'm like, yeah, I can eat that. But pepperoni isn't actually officially cooked. It's smoked and cured. So when you like cook it on a pizza or whatever and you release those oils, that's when you're really, really cooking it. It's still edible, um, but it's actually a cured meat. And the way you would normally make it, it takes up to two to three days. But with this one, all we need to do is add some pork mince. It's got all the curing stuff in there and we can put it in the oven really low. And in a couple of hours, we should have homemade pepperoni. I have no idea if this is gonna work. So this is kind of like, I was like, oh wow, I really wanted to do like a homemade pepperoni from scratch with all the curing and stuff like that. Uh, I'm gonna do a biltong video soon and lots of other things like that. But I thought, why not try this out first of all as an introduction to it and see if in like, well, what time is it? It's half past nine in the morning now. By approximately midday, we could have homemade pepperoni that we can then put on a pizza with this side by side and see if it's anything different or if it's just, we've just made some unique space sausage or something. Steps. Uh, and these are the casings. I recognize this because I did a sausage making video with my mum a few years ago, which was hilarious. <laughs> And of course, this hot pepperoni cure mix. Now I'm glad it says hot on it because the one that I've got is hot. You can d get different flavors and all that stuff. That is, is in the box and we only need half of it. So this is literally it. We'll come on to the pipe and bag instructions in a minute. First step, combine 900 grams of chilled pork mince with 90 milliliters of ice cold water and one packet of the cure mix together in a bowl. Mix quickly as you don't want the meat to get too warm. Okay. Now there is the potential that mine could be healthier because I read that pepperoni is typically up to 30% fat uh, and the rest meat, which sometimes you eat it, you think maybe it's the other way around, but this is only 5% pork mince fat. Oh, that smells amazing. Is there paprika in there? I love paprika. Well, that's not gonna be red, is it? You might notice I'm not wearing my wedding ring. Uh, it is my wedding anniversary today with Mrs. B. It's our seven year anniversary, thank you. Uh, but I have legitimately, I would take it off for this, I have actually lost it. <laughs> I know where it is, I know what room it's in. Uh, I just can't find it, that's my best. Why does that still, that smells vinegary. Boom, oh, should we, let's keep the ice cube in there. Why not? And I'm gonna try and do this with one hand. Oh, that is so nice and cold. In fact, that might be a genius idea that they should have added to their instructions, putting a small ice cube in there because it gives you a little bit more allowance to um, to move this around, doesn't it? Yeah, so having the ice cube in there is actually massively helping and make, making it almost unbearable to hold. This is so cold, oh my gosh. I'm happy with that. A little bit confused by the color, in fact, massively. Uh, maybe when we bake it, that will push it a little bit more, but hey, that's fine. Uh, I'm gonna get the ice cube out. I've managed to keep one completely clean hand, so we'll get it into a smaller bowl. Of course, the other cool thing, now I've got a clean hand, is I can actually close all my cupboards, wash my hands, and uh, turn this off without getting meat all over me, uh, camera. Okay, so we have these casings, and we're only gonna need one. Now, these things are pretty cool because they uh, look like, yeah, look. <laughs> they would compact like that. They go on for miles. So, oh, uh, we wanna cut it in the middle. Nice. And then apparently, again, about halfway. Oh, wow. Because we should be able to make four out of this. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. You can get a lot. You could probably get the whole of the meat in there. But what you ideally want to do is take one end, leave the other tucked up like that, and tie a knot if you can in here. I am rubbish at tying knots, folks. Don't mind doing them, I just don't believe in them. I just think they're overrated. 
Uh, look, there we go, nice tight knot. So when we get to the end by piping the meat through there, hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> we should be able to have some sort of pepperoni looking thing that isn't gonna escape the meat the other end. All right, so before snipping off the end of our piping bag, it says it is recommended to get some spray oil uh, and just, can you hear that? Like lubricate the inside of it, which I, I mean, they're probably putting that from experience, but like pork is actually quite an oily meat anyway. It should just slide down there. But hey, we'll get it in there. And don't forget, I've also got these things, which uh, do look, yes, a little bit um, <laughs> suggestive. I just don't know how the next scene, I'm gonna avoid it not looking like something else. So here we are, there's our cold bowl of meat. We're gonna work quite quick. Got two spoons, uh, might only need the one, but oh, wow, yes. We are just gonna drop that in, folks. I've got half of it still. I'm gonna keep that cool in the fridge because that's actually quite a lot. <laughs> Place one of the casings on the end and hold with your thumb and forefinger, okay? Pump the meat into the casings with your middle and ring finger. I don't have, <laughs> can't find my ring. Don't be tempted to squeeze the casing. Just hold it gently in place. All right, let's do this. <laughs> Oh, this is an absolute nightmare trying to do this end. Yeah, I'm literally pinching the casing and holding it on. Are we ready? Let's go. I know, maybe I need to help it. What's going on? No. Maybe if I just... I'll take that off. We've got three more bags anyway. I've made, I've made some pepperoni. Long story short, I just spent about four minutes trying to tie a knot in the other end of this thing, uh, and I'm just not doing it. So luckily, uh, I'm gonna task Chloe or Phoebe, who have smaller fingers than me, to, to do that. So let's try again. Ugh. Oh. Gosh, and now it's fallen off as well. Good news is I've got eight casings, uh, and this one, look, I'm gonna go straight, I'm literally gonna shove it right in there now and see if this does it. Oh, that's promising. Oh, there you go, there you go. This should not be that hard. Come on, what is going on? This is rubbish. This is so bad. I'm gonna have to do it this way. Oh gosh, I mean this this is going really well so far. <laughs> oh there you go. Oh it's doing it. Oh, we are getting there, oh my gosh. <laughs> right, that's a good start. I can actually put the bag back in that but I need to get this back in the fridge to keep it uncured. It's still cold, I just don't want it to get warm. I don't want to ruin it, he says. <laughs> But whilst, that, whilst the main bag is in the fridge, that is the right theory. As we pump it through, you see, watch the bag there. It's gonna, it's gonna extend there and push it away like that and create more. That is exactly what should be happening. Um, so leave it with me. We have got some pepperoni here. Um, <laughs> it's just gonna take me a little while to get it in the bags. Right, Mrs. B's helped me with this now. Yeah, just hold that casing on there. Look, there we go. It's our wedding anniversary. <coughs> do you know what I think we're gonna do? Now I've got your help. Is that all right? We can start again. I've got brand new ones. It'd be nice and neat. We're gonna put it in the fridge and go again. I think this is definitely a two-person job. Ready? Right, you want me to hold it or you yeah, hold Yeah, you hold it? that and I'll... You hold it and I'll pump. <laughs> yes, we're doing it! Because look, it's coming out. Oh no! It's not going uh, down so, this way. Yeah, that's the thing. It just doesn't move down the shaft. Oh, that looks better, actually. Even. Yeah, and we get it right into the uh, bit where it's all bunched together. Oh, no, I split it. Just don't push it in. Don't push it. Stop. Oh, no. This is ru This is rubbish. This is very awkward. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Hey. Uh, I've got one sausage casing left out of the whole kit. This is a nightmare. It's all just escaping. This, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to get a casing that's already opened and just pump the meat through it. 
Okay. That's pretty we... good. Should I push? Yeah. Oh. Ah. Oh. <laughs> We're getting to the point where I might have to go to the shop that sold these to get another one to try it again tomorrow. <laughs> it's all going wrong and now, like I said, it's starting to rain as well. Oh, this has been a bit of a nightmare. That, I don't know if you can see it too well, that is a sausage making gun. And uh, it arrives tomorrow if I order it now. We've managed to make one. Uh, and I think I'm going to order another one of these kits, a sausage making gun, and as a bonus scene, I'm going to show you how easy it should be to do that step, right? But I think we carry on with this. We're going to add more to this? Yeah. Conclusion, let's play around with some sausage off camera. How's that? Yeah. Oh, look at that. There we go. <gasps> That's what we want. That? Jeez. But I think we've done pretty well there, actually. Me too. Well, from where we were. <laughs> I think we should quit while we're ahead. Yeah. Now, when pepperoni is cured properly, apparently around about 77 Fahrenheit or roughly 20 C. Now, my oven won't go that low, but it says the first thing I need to do is get my oven to 40 C. Now, it doesn't do that as standard, but it does have a, a plate warming mode here. But it only goes here 40 C for a couple of minutes. Is that it? P? No? I don't know what that is. <laughs> Oh no, that's the, the um, self-cleaning mode that shatters the oven. Food warming, and then I can change it right down to 40C. Just the gentlest of heats for the first blast. So here we go, and apparently we place it straight onto the shelf. So very rare that I could put my hand into a preheated oven. And I was thinking, oh no, they might char the actual skin. But apparently not. 20 minutes at 40C first of all. Why do I feel like making my own completely from scratch could have been easier than this? Like, it feels very sort of like blocky and I can't, I can't explain it, but we're there. All right, 20 minutes has just passed at 40C. All right, Chloe? What can you smell? Meat. That's all I can smell. I smell meat. So now it's another 25 minutes, but happy? <laughs> it's just like Hansel and Gretel style climb in there. We bump it up from 40 to 50C. So that luckily is the zone where my oven gets going. Yeah, because normally I would use, yeah, minimum 50C. Can you see that? Normally I would use a fan oven, but this is completely non-fan. Because if it was fan, it would have to be 30C. And there we go. <laughs> we'll see it in another 25 minutes. What's going to happen? It's going to be pepperoni sausages. So it's now at 50. We're going up to 80. We'll have a cheeky little look. What do you think? Oh yeah, I can smell it now. Yeah? <coughs> that is, yeah, that's, there is some tang. 90 minutes now at 80C. Whilst that's happening, I've just been making some pizza dough. So uh, we'll have that ready to uh, present at the end. 90 minutes of tangy kitchen, but we want it to be cooked, don't we? Kitchen's gonna stink. Yeah. All right, the timer has just gone off for 90 minutes. We now need to put it onto a wire rack. I am that confident that 80C isn't too hot uh, apart from bizarrely, when it is in a room, when this is 30 to C in here, I'm like the Englishman going, oh my god, oh it's so bad. I feel like I can take it straight out of the oven right now. I can <laughs> pick it up like this, place it down on there. Just looks like a massive bratwurst, doesn't it? Well, there we go then, folks. That did not take long to cool down. Uh, so I guess pepperoni has got this sausage casing membrane on it. I never really thought that in the past. Let's compare it. So here is a pack of pepperoni, uh, and that is the sort of color <laughs> that we didn't achieve, but that's that's potentially okay. It could be a dye, but you've got the speckles here of the fats and the spices and things. But I'm just wondering if it does have, you can't see it there. Like, do you get, no, I can't seem to see an outer skin on it. So maybe the meat is rolled up dry. We'll find out when we make it from scratch authentically. But if we just cut this down the middle, <laughs> that to me looks like a British sausage. Well, let's just try and get some fairly thin strips, see if we can, this is my fear. That was my fear, look, it was gonna crumble like that. It certainly smells like pepperoni though, doesn't it? Would you like to try a piece? Have this bit there. <laughs> it has got a little bit. <laughs> It has got a little bit of heat in it. It actually almost feels like a healthier pepperoni, if that makes sense. You still get that vibe and that texture and that, you know, the twang of it, 
the flavour is there. That is hot though. But to me, it was like a kind of like a healthier pepperoni. I was just going to say that. Let's get this in the oven. Okay. And see what this does, and see if it replicates. I kind of wanted some of the oils to release and stuff, but that just looks like meat. It really does taste like it, though. Yeah, it does. So I'm just getting it out now, and I'm not sure if you can see that the oil on that pepperoni and the little bubbly waves as it was in the oven, like little ripples of pepperoni. With ours, you just kind of get this like dull, meaty, sausagey slab. I mean, it looks good. It looks really good, but there's no oils come from it. You know what you get? Those little puddles of oil on the pepperoni? Hmm. Exhibit A, standard pepperoni, thin, wavy, oily puddles. Nice. Smells good. Mm -hmm. Thick slabs of sausage here. Still smells nice, but no oil traces. Your conclusion, Mrs. Barry? This one is going to be better. Is it? I feel like this video has been a journey, but yet it's not over. I've ordered more casing. I've ordered a sausage pumping machine. So we can do a bonus scene. Mm. Do you like that? Yeah, that's what you expect with a pepperoni pizza. That's what you want. Mm -hmm. That's what you demand. And you're worth it. Right, there we go. Mmm. It's just not pepperoni, is it? It's like it's the just... heat, the, the tang, a sort of a leathery sensation. But it's just like spicy sausage. Yeah. So we've kind of made ourselves a meat feast pizza there. <laughs> we've yeah. had like pepperoni and space sausage. Gosh, that's spicy. It did say hot on the packet, sorry. Oh, my mouth's on fire. Thanks so much for watching. This was really interesting introduction to the world of pepperoni. I want to make my own now from scratch. So if you've got any tips and suggestions, uh, do let me know down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't for regular videos and uh, I'll probably be doing some more kits from time to time. Now, time for a bonus scene with the uh, sausage machine in a few days, whenever it arrives. Cheers for watching. Bye. Bye. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Simon's moustache, goatee, maybe all three. All right, it has been two days. Mrs. B is desperate for me to get that mix out of the fridge because it just stinks. Boom. Down there is a box which should contain our sausage meat pressy thing and some more casings, which are absolutely gigantic. Ah, there we go. And a reason our pepperoni isn't red, apparently it goes red, it's something to do with curing by reacting with the heme in the myoglobin of the proteinaceous components of the meat. Obviously, we didn't really cure, we kind of just slow cooked it. So here we go. There should be sausage meat coming. Oh, I can see it. Can you see? Look, 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 see? Watch, watch, watch. It's easily pumping down that tube. Now it's doing something. Yes. There we go. Oh my gosh, this looks so rude. This looks so rude. <laughs> yes! If you use one of these kits, get one of these machines, have some fun with it, and uh, yeah, maybe you could end up with pepperoni like this. This video has inspired me. I am going to do my own proper cure from scratch next. See you next time.